test. I think you just pull it over and <laughs> Well, join on there, and then when I talk, we'll we'll see. Where's my filters to make me look pretty? <laughs> Which Wi-Fi are you connected to? Because it looks like none. Okay. Double chin. Anybody that watches the replay, this is Bright Eyed from Havoc Mead. So it is mead, it's not beer. Mead's just honey wine. It's pretty good. It's iced coffee, blueberry, maple syrup, and mead. What's going on with that? Maybe we should have done that first before we went live. Because I've never had a problem in here with it. It's not trying to update right now, is it? In the bottom corner? The little dock? Say hi in the chat if you're out there. <laughs> change the account. Actually, it looks much better on that. We look good. We look good. <laughs> That's good. Sound like I'm far away though? Yeah. I should have brought the extender out here. Maybe next time. Or I could hook this up to you and I'll go get it because. It looks like it's us and us. <laughs> and then turn off and check it out. On 
watch it. <laughs> oh, not in front of everybody. I'll be back there. Yeah. If you want. Yeah, let's do that. Because this is not going well. Hi! Looks like we have some more people. If you're there, say hi in the comments so we know. We're having some internet difficulties, so Mike is going to go get our Wi-Fi extender. Hopefully that will help us out. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Hi, Daniel. Not sure if you heard that. We're having some uh, some internet problems, so Mike went to go get the extender. Hopefully that'll help us out a little bit better. We were planning on doing this somewhere else. Uh, we were going to do it in our workshop tonight. However, it is very chilly in there right now, so we are in our honey shit. <laughs> do you have any questions for us? Just throw them out there and and I'll start answering. This is our first live video, and just kind of sitting here waiting for somebody to ask anything because uh, we had our, we have our War A Hive here that we were going to talk about, um, but we're having some internet difficulties. Seems like it's working, but um, we'll see. If, uh, if you have any questions. Let us know in the chat. Welcome. I'm Lisa. I'm a journeyman beekeeper here at Rascal Apiary, which is our homestead apiary that we have. Uh, we have close to 20 hives, and we've been beekeeping now for four years. I think four years. <laughs> um, <laughs> you are in our honey shed right now. Have a moray box that we built that's sitting right next to me that we're 
going to talk about tonight. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Okay, so this is our war, our war ray that we built, and we built the frames as well. It is a top bar style hive. That's what the frames look like. So it just has a kind of a triangular wedge that the bees will draw the wax down from that. There is no foundation. We have a worry out in our apiary right now, and it's going really well, but we needed another box to put on there to give them some more room. So we just built this one. Uh, and we do have a couple of windows. Let's see if I can show you. Thank you. There we go. There's one of the windows. So if the bees are in here, you can see them dancing on the glass. Uh, we have handles on either side. I tried to make them look like pig noses. <laughs> pig noses. Yeah. And there's a, a window on the other side as well. But it's pretty, pretty simple build. Um, I think the most difficult part, I, I would say, and I'll have to ask Mike if he agrees, but I think the most difficult part was probably getting the right spacing for these, um, well, these spacers for for the bars to fit into. So making sure they're the right distance apart from each other to keep that B space accurate. How was it? How was it building the frames? Uh, the frames were super easy. I just grabbed old pieces of wood that we had. Basically, cut cut your width, and then set the table saw to 30 degrees, and just cut those little wedges out. Super simple. Um, and then, of course, you got to cut your length. But all of that took maybe 10, 15 minutes, and I made 30 of them. So, not too bad. Uh, I I would say the dividers. It's pretty easy to make, or the little spacers. It's really easy to make those, but the way I was doing it, I was forcing it, and things were just going all over the place. I was breaking pieces, and it wasn't it wasn't a great experience. But much easier than just making a bunch of little nubs and trying to like screw them in, yeah. or yeah, glue them in. So, do you think that was the hardest part, or what do you what do you think was the hardest part? Oh, maybe the windows, just because that it was a different way different method than we've used before. Yeah, it was hard for the first uh, for first time doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and it was cool that we did it on camera for the first <laughs> time. So, like, making the typical War A box is pretty easy. You just make a couple cuts, you make your spacers, and then you're good. But, uh, yeah, having the, the camera there makes you a little extra nervous, and you start thinking about other things and not focusing on making your your hive box. So I messed up a couple of things, but it's not bad. I think it turned out well. Looks nice. And I'll pick it up again. We did just seal it, so it has um, just a clear coating over it. You can still see the pretty wood, uh, but it is sealed, so we don't have to worry about the weather ruin, ruining it. Um, very simple build. Did some in the corners picture frame kind of style, 45 degree angles, to join things together. Got a couple screws in there, holding it all together. Screws for the handles, make sure they're nice and sturdy so when we pick up the box, it's not going to fall apart. Yep. I even put like little like finger... I felt that when I picked it up. He did this while I was at work. So, there we go. So there's like little, little grooves. So your fingers fit like perfectly in those little grooves, and this the top of it has a has a I think 45 degree angle is what it kind of looks uh, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the rain will. It's actually leftover pieces from the long hive. Oh, okay. So when we cut a big strip of 45 
the slant yeah. for the rain. Yeah. So the rain will, if it, if it does rain, it'll just kind of shear off and, and not hold, you know, pool on the top of it and wear it out further. But yeah, you put little, little wedges down here. And and I just did it with the uh, the drill press. It's nice work. <laughs> Easy to pick up, and it's a uh, pretty pretty shallow. Uh, do you remember what the length? Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, I'd I, say it's about six inches. That's what I was going to say. Five I'd say inches. about six inches or so. Yeah. Uh, Daniel asks, "Are you going to take any honey from it?" Yes. How will you do yes. it? Yes. Great question. Awesome. Um, so we did actually take. Some honey, I think maybe only a frame or two from our war raid last year. And all we did was take the full frame out. We replaced it with an empty. And we took it inside and did a crush and strain. We actually have a video uh, in our on our channel if you want to check that out. It's how to do it. But basically, you, you take it off the frame and you have it over uh, a colander or a sieve. If you have one of those, that's what I use. And then you literally just crush all of the honeycomb over that and then leave all of the, the wax over the strainer so it can just keep filtering out and it'll just drain into a, a bowl under that. And I, I think I left it there probably overnight. Yes, but and that's that's not what we're going to do this year. <laughs> okay, she <laughs> said all that to tell you this. We basically cornered the market uh, in our little area, nobody does cut comb honey. And these war A boxes are perfect for that. You get them to pull out the wax, put in honey, and then just come back later and just cut out squares, stick them in a box, sell them. And uh, because they're so destruct, uh, destructive to the hive, it costs a little bit more. So, got another one. Looks good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rob some <laughs> ideas from you and incorporate it into the hive. That's perfect. That's awesome. exactly what we're here for. If you do, do you see? See, if yep. you do that, send us some pictures. Uh, you can email us at rascalapiary at gmail.com. We would love to see some pictures of your build, especially if you use some of the ideas that we did with Alex. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, let us know uh, about the build or about just beekeeping in general, um, our experience with the war A. Yep. So, Something I would do different about the War A is I would have done the box joints. And I actually built one last night that has box joints, but it doesn't have a window, it doesn't have anything fancy. So uh, the box joints worked out really well. It actually fits better. Uh, I don't see a, uh, I don't foresee a whole lot of separation uh, later in the year when it gets really hot and the wood really dries out. Because here in North Carolina, like it, if you live along the coast, you know it's wet. Our winter is mud. It's not snow. <laughs> Sometimes we get snow, but it's mainly mud. And when it gets real hot in the summer, it gets really hot. And all that moisture comes out of the wood. And then it starts opening little entrances for the bees. And the bees love it, but I don't. <laughs> so um, I, I like going with box joints because of that. And then I like, uh, that's another question. I like having the windows so that I can look in and just on an off day when I'm worried about a hive, I can look at it and find out what's going on. Okay. Uh, how many boxes did we start with when we set up the, when we set it up? Uh, so with the War Ray, we initially bought a kit. Uh, I saw it and said, oh, this is super cute, and we wanted to try that management technique already anyway. Um, so we purchased a kit, and it came with two boxes. Uh, initially, it was... We just put it with the one until the bees drew out. You're shaking your head. I didn't shake my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> one to me. Um, yeah, we just put the one box initially until they drew out all but the the two frames on either end. Uh, once they had those drawn out, then we put uh, another box actually under it. Uh, that's a little bit different than a long straw style. Uh, you put boxes when you add them. You add them underneath instead of on top. Underneath is natering, yes. and that, what that does is it keeps the bees building downwards. Oh. And like she said, the kit came with only two boxes, so we thought two boxes is great. Then I started following groups on, on Facebook. I started reading materials, and I'm noticing all these guys have way more than two boxes. There's like four or 
five boxes stacked up because the hives are much smaller. So it's almost like having half of an eight frame in there for each box. So four frame, essentially. Um, and now that we know that, I have to build more boxes because these bees, they're already in the bottom box and the top box. So looking through the windows today, I, I was like, oh, well, these things have to get all the chemical vapors out of or off the sides now so we can put them over on the hives. From, so, from how we sealed them. I'm a carpenter by trade, retired now, but I'm building my own hives here in the UK. Well, if you're a carpenter, <laughs> and we, I, I am not. We are not carpenters. <laughs> Definitely not by trade or otherwise. Yeah. We, we are wannabe carpenters, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're going to have a lot of fun with this because with, with beehives, there's so many different ways of making them. And basically, as long as you understand the base principles of what the bees need and that they don't care if it's pretty, uh, you're, you're going to do the, you're going to have lots of fun. The spacing's the key. Just make sure you get the spacing right, and then you're good. So the spacing between the frames is supposed to be 3 eighths of an inch, and that's just enough for them to, ooh, he's in the UK. Is that nine millimeters? <laughs> I'd have to get a ruler. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but three eighths of an inch and uh, I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, that. we'll get that. I'm sorry. We're, we're, I'm taking notes in case there's anything that uh, comes to mind. I'm gonna look it up so we know for next time. And we'll we'll pin it in the comments. Definitely. Yeah, if you have any questions for us, or, or if you have any suggestions for us, Steve, since you're a carpenter, um, to make our hives, you know, look even better. You said it's still, oh, better. It's still inches at my age. It is still good, inches. Good, good, okay. good. That's nice. Yeah. It makes it easy. Yeah. It's like, I don't know millimeters right now. <laughs> Not off the top of my head. But, yeah. So, so they build up, and the difference between, like, a Langstroth and... A war a is yeah it's smaller but then you also have this insulation that goes on top you want to talk about oh, that yeah we have a quilt board and i wish we had one in here to show you uh but we don't have a spare we we only have the one war a right now uh so our quilt board's out on top of the war a. Uh, but basically it is uh four walls and it's the same size as this box here and you know in the, the perimeter of it but instead of an empty bottom like this, it has a, a canvas stapled to the bottom here. And then you just have, you know, kind of an empty box here with the canvas underneath. And then you fill it with um, a wood shavings, or, which is what we use. Or you could fill it with uh, straw or wool or any kind of insulating and moisture wicking material. And that's what we use. We use the wood shavings in the in the winter. That just helps insulate the hive a little bit better. Uh, in the summer, we we don't put anything in it. Um, but then that's a, just another way for you know, excess moisture to get out of the hive. Yep. So when I run uh, cedar through the planer, all of those shavings, I'll just I'll, instead of putting it in the chicken coop, I'll just put it in the quilt board, and that leaves it in insulation or moist. Uh, like she said, it'll, it'll take in all the moisture, but you can leave it that way all year. You don't have to just do it during the winter. And the space in the war is so small that they're able to uh, regulate their heat much easier than in a Langstroth, because in a Langstroth, right, they, they make this cluster that's, that's real tight and in the center, hopefully, of your hive, and then it kind of moves around with the sun. But with the war a, they're just kind of like, they're in a tight cluster and they're there. Like, there's no real moving around um, in, in large amounts where you're going from for, front to back and side to side. It's just like they're there and they move just a little bit. So the chances of like starvation and everything else it, it is a lot lower with War A because it's supposed to be more towards a tree, just like a tree. Um, how many hives are we running? Daniel asked how many hives are we Wait, running? I. I'd have to go out and count right this second, but we try to stay around 20. Sometimes we'll dip a little bit lower because we'll sell some bees, or obviously we'll lose them every once in a while. Um, so our, our first year we started out with, with two, 
which yes. is what we recommend mm -hmm. basic beekeepers or beginner beekeepers beginner. start not basic <laughs> um, sorry <laughs> the um and then the second year we really liked it so much we kind of went crazy um the two hives expanded and we split them and then we ended up getting a couple of packages because there was like it wasn't cheap but it was cheaper coming from this other source um and we didn't realize that he was just getting his bees from georgia so it was like those aren't local bees and we struggled a little bit the second year because of that the third year went absolutely crazy we split everything we didn't buy any bees um and then we were at 25-ish hives and we decided whoa this is kind of outside of our uh, our, our comfort zone because it's just Lisa and I it's not like we have a whole team of people coming out and, and we both have full-time jobs <laughs> yeah and we we both work so, so. it's uh we we decided that um we decided about 20 is right for us because then we can do 10 one week and 10 the next week and then we can have alternating inspections so we can inspect every two weeks but with the with the war a it's it's super simple because those boxes aren't heavy you know, the, the only thing you got to worry about is them um, essentially <laughs> connecting wax between the bottom box and the top box because there's nothing to stop them. There's no frame. Hopefully I answered your question. We run <laughs> yes. about 20. Right now, 20. right now we have 17 out there. We didn't, we didn't lose. Uh, oh, we lost we one lost over one. the winter, and that was because they were already small in a 10-frame hive and... I just said, hey, let's feed them, and we'll stack a, I don't know why we stacked a medium on top of it, and then they ended up giving up. Let's see. Steve says, new to beekeeping, I have only two hives at present, but, uh, oh, planning on filling the lanes for my wife. Oh, uh, nationals. The nationals. nationals. Sorry, I got to leave okay. now as it is 1 o'clock here. Oh, Ooh. well, thank you for watching. Yes. Thank uh, you we'll for still watching. answer it, and you can watch it later. Yeah. Um, so, lands, we don't really, we don't have one yet. The plan is to make one, but with the frame size being different and the fact that it's not just easy as making top bars <laughs> or just making regular Langstroth frames, which goes with all our other equipment, um, I've kind of been pushing that off. That's why we did the... Uh, Langstroth long hive and that's only because then I don't have to worry about oh did I grab a, a lands frame or did I grab a Langstroth frame or why is this all mixed up so it's the same sort of concept but as we as we get through the the war A's in the Langstroths we'll add the the lands too just to see what it looks like we don't have a typical or traditional top bar either so that's on the list too Well, that's, that's awesome. First year beekeeper. Good night, Steve. Thanks for watching. Yeah, good night. This one, I keep looking at it, but it updates slower than that it one. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. And then uh, if anybody's curious, we named our apiary Rascal's Apiary because he is almost more interested in the bees than we are. He likes to walk <laughs> back there and smell the hives. He's really, um, his, his nose is incredibly strong compared to all the... <laughs> any of the other dogs to be honest um and then he's he's been stung once or twice and and that was an experience for him but he doesn't swell up that bad he got one in between the pads of his on his paws and that was a little rough for for me to try and help him because then he wants to like bite you <laughs> so he has a thing about his teeth yep well what else do you want to talk about we got we talked about the war a, a little bit. We talked about who we are. What do you guys want to see? Are there any videos that you're like, I'm super pumped about this? Um, I know Mike keeps drinking mead in this in this video, so maybe you're interested in you know, making. seeing some mead making. I don't know. I know there's probably tons of other YouTube videos about that, but so I haven't I haven't made an apiary. <laughs> I haven't I haven't made mead in a while because we made mead in 2018 and 19 and we still have the bottles and it's fantastic absolutely <laughs> fantastic way better than I mean I don't want to say these guys but it is it is <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really good and if you can make your own out of your own honey like that is the way to 
to go. Make a small batch and just save it for yourself. Or a big batch and then split up those big batches into smaller batches and then you can tweak them and add like strawberries to this one and add blueberries to this one and or I don't know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do to them. It's pretty awesome. The first year we did a strawberry mead and it was fantastic. It was so good. And we drank all of it. Yep. <laughs> but, but there's mead and then yeah. More, more build videos? We can do some more build videos. I gotta get better at, like, these are good, but I gotta get better at being able to woodwork while we're filming. <laughs> it's it's a struggle, you guys. I don't know if, uh, if any of you have a YouTube channel as well, or if you film uh, just for your own, you know, to look back on it. Um, let us know if you do. We'd be super interested to see. But, um, yeah, it's it's different. Yep. <laughs> and I'm like over his shoulder like this sometimes trying to get the film. Or like bumping my elbow <laughs> while I'm trying to run the router or something. Yeah. I'm like, ah. Uh. Yeah, it's different. So, but yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a good year. Oh, for those that are beekeepers that are watching in North America, mainly on, on the East Coast, uh, something that I've noticed is that small hive beetle is already out in full force. And that's going to be an issue. So if you are brand new, take a look in the hive beetle traps. Um, we use better, better beetle, beetle blasters. blasters. Yeah. And the, the only drawback on those is that the, the plastic on the side, when you go to push it into the frame, sometimes will pop up and the beetles hide under there. But other than that, when the bees chase the beetles into that trap, they ain't getting out. But, yep. Every, every year as a beekeeper, you'll notice that once you figure out one problem, the next year, it's not a problem anymore. But then, you know, something crazy that didn't happen last year is now happening again. So the the first year, we, we really didn't have any problems that we noticed. The second year was small hive beetle. Just learning. The, yeah, <laughs> just learning. The third year was uh, yellow jackets. Oh. And then uh, last year was really, really just kind of keeping up with Varroa. Yeah. Um, because the... The first two years we didn't really have any issues because we just treated like everybody else said just but, throw something in and treat it but now but last now we're getting year, away from that yeah last year it was really trying to uh we wanted really strong colonies of course i mean everybody does i think but you know with the strong colonies you have high population of mites and if you're not treating or monitoring you know consistently then those mite loads can get out of control and once you get used to monitoring, you'll get, you know, used to your bees a little bit more. You'll go out to the apiary with a task to do, and you'll you'll do it. And if you notice something else, then you notice something else. But you're not just getting in the into the the hive just to check for a queen and putting it back. You know, a lot of beginner beekeepers that's their that's their big thing is I want to get in there. I want to see how much honey we have, and I want to see if I still have a queen. Uh, okay. <laughs> But what about everything else that, that keeps your bees alive and, and happy and healthy? So well, our bees don't typically sting unless I accidentally start crushing them or whatever. Um, when they're unhappy because of something going on in the hive, that's when it, it really starts happening. Um, but typically throughout the year, we don't, we don't the, really have an in issue. The, in the dirt, they the, get a little, yeah. little bit cranky. Mm -hmm. uh, they do tend to go after me more than him. I've yep. noticed that. I don't know if I have like I smell a good. smell that comes <laughs> off of me that they're just drawn to or something. Oh. So. Okay. Well, you want to call it? Yeah. We've done, yeah. we've done a good little bit. If anybody has any alibis, go <laughs> ahead, throw them out. We'll <laughs> answer them real quick. If you have any more questions. And if not, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, again, if you have any questions at any time, you can email us at rascalapiary at gmail.com. You can also check out our website at rascalapiary.com. We have uh, lots of info, and we're continuously putting more out. I put I post out at least once a week, and um, yeah, you can see more pictures of Rascal because he's adorable. He's our he's our puppy. If uh, if you are a member and you jump in there. If you are a member and you, you joined, go in there. We just posted a close-up of a, a frame that we had, and it has 
like really detailed shots of what larva looks like, what eggs look like, what pollen looks like, what bee bread looks like. Um, I actually talked to Tall Cedars today, which is one of our subscribers, and uh, they suggested that I make some changes to the video to make it a little easier for, for folks to follow. So tonight I'm going to go run through and do that, and then that's it. I'll, I'll post that, and I'll have a whole bunch of things. We have more videos on the War A. We can easily make more videos on the War A. We have, um, we have me rambling a lot <laughs> about the War A, and I can try and take that and make it uh, into a, a <laughs> digestible video. If not, over next the next week or two, we'll, we'll do more on War A, because we're going to be going through all the inspections. Yeah, we uh, this... This summer, we do plan on uh, going through our process for how we how we talk about what we plan to do mm -hmm. for our inspections beforehand, and then actually take you out while we're getting into the hives as well. And then afterwards, we're going to follow up with how we how we take our notes mm -hmm. and kind of go over what we saw in the hives and yep. how they're doing. Yep. Just everyone. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Have Thank a good night. You guys. Good night.